Miller Mechanic here. All right, we're back out in the shop. We're working on the mill and uh, doing some housekeeping inside this thing. I have it uh, tore apart, as you can see. Uh, there's the top with all the gears, and there's the motor. Uh, what I suspected was true. I ran this thing for about 15 seconds. And in this little window here, I saw a bunch of little, little floaties going by. And I said, hmm, I wonder if they didn't get all this casting sand out. So we're going to have to thoroughly clean this out in my hand right there. So I'll dunk you this. And this is a brand new, brand new mill. Got 10 seconds on it. But anyway, we need to clean that. And then I want to do some, some mods to it. What I want to do is this gear is the out, output you can see the splines in there and so that's where the uh the spindle goes the the motor is this one and you got all your gears here so this is this is the output what i'd like to do is have something similar like i have on my bridge board here i really like having this break here that's this lever right there so when i do my draw bar i can I can just quickly lock that and uh, tighten or loosen the draw bar. So what I want to do here, seeing that I have this thing totally taken apart, is put some sort of mechanism that will lock this with a lever. And I already have a hole there. That is the fill slash drain slash breather hole. I wonder if I can use that and put something in here to kind of lock that into place. So all sealed bearings in here. Uh, everything looks pretty good. This this top piece looks nice and clean. I think they got all the sand out of this one. So uh, no gasket, just uh, RTV on this. Which I guess is fine. Um, and then the paint and body filler they use is very 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 poor. Uh, you can see it just totally chips off here. So I think they used drywall compound is what it what it seems like. It's not even like Bondo. It's just garbage. I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, second thing I want to do is I'd like to put a counterweight on this. Because there's quite a bit of mass. You put this motor on there. You got this head on here. It's full of oil. And it's got quite a bit of oil in there. Uh, so I'd like to put a counterweight on that. And then all this stuff, I got to add to it. Uh, this is obviously the oiler and the manifolds and the fittings and the hose and the, all that stuff. Uh, so I got to put all that on here. And that's kind of part of the reason I took the head apart is I got to get it. I got to get it off and get in there to put my oil lines. So we are going to take this thing further apart. All right. I got the uh, head all cleaned out. I got all the sand out of it. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but that's clean. Uh, I did have to replace one bearing because it got a lot of grit in it, so I did replace that. Uh, I did, however, find something very interesting up front here. I took this ring off just to see what was underneath, and I found a bearing. Interesting. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is this, is the, I guess, the uh, ring that holds the bottom of the bearing in but look at this gap there's like an eighth inch gap all the way around this no seal nothing so i don't know what prevents all the chips and junk from getting blown up into that bearing this bearing doesn't have a seal on it like i can see bearings like the, right there so i mean this this has no sealing at all so what i want to do and i don't know why they didn't do this from the factory or design it this way this is a 42 millimeter uh shaft right here coming out so i'll get a 42 millimeter seal and then machine me something that'll probably cross fit into this and then hold the seal so to keep all the junk from getting in here because when you're milling it's going to pop up and you're going to have air and you're going to air off your your vice and stuff, and you're going to blow all kinds of junk in there. I don't know why they didn't do that. Seems like that's an oversight.
So, anyway, and this thing, like I saw this, and that big burr. Ouch, this thing's super crooked too. So, anyway, I guess that's what you get with a Chinese mill, but we're at, uh, one part at a time, fixing it, making it better. So, uh, let me go get a seal, and I think I have enough aluminum to do that. So let's uh, let's get going on that. Okay, we made some progress here. I moved everything to this little table uh, so we can see it better in the light. But what I've done is I picked up a 42 millimeter seal and made this little holder housing thing out of a piece of aluminum I had laying around. Um, this goes on here. And then this uh, this ring right here, I drilled and tapped two holes to hold this piece on it right like that. So that just sits there, nice and flush. And then I got two little stainless, I think these are 1032s, that go in there like this. Boom and boom. Uh, hopefully that'll work. It looks like it will keep all the junk from getting into that bearing. So it doesn't take up much space. So hopefully it won't interfere with anything. Uh, so then we got that done. And then over here, you can see there's now a lever arm on this. So this is my stop. And the way this works, the way I did it, is I've replaced this. So this uh is the breather slash fill plug that goes in the top here it's a 16 by 1.5 millimeter thread so i just got a corresponding bolt that'll screw in there and then drilled a hole straight through it for a 3 8 shaft then i machine this for my lever here so the way this works is you move this and it moves a lever into the teeth as you move the, move the lever here. There's a spring that's gonna come off that bolt right there. That bolt is countersunk, just like these, so I need a longer bolt. Um, but this is not a brake, this would be a, a lock or a stop to hold the spindle. So when I do my draw bar, uh, it'll hold it, so it won't spin on me. So we'll see how, that, uh, how effective that is. Hopefully that works pretty good. So something else I got done over here on the old bridge port. This is the saddle for the Z. Goes up and down the column there. I got that off. Uh, I drilled and tapped a, uh, a port here. And there's another one on this side right there. I machined a, a groove in here with my little eighth inch ball nose end mill. And so uh, this will be for the uh, lubrication. The automatic luber will squirt oil in there. I need to drill a hole here, cut a little groove. Um, I don't know if you can see it on that side, but there's a hole there. And there's a hole underneath there. You can't really see it. So it's going to, oil's going to come through here, squirt up, and then through this way to lubricate this dovetail and this surface right here. So uh, I got to finish up that side. I have to do the, uh, uh, the gib here. Put that in there, cut a slot in that. Get that going because that goes on that side uh then i gotta take this apart and do the exact same thing on the saddle this piece right here so hopefully that'll come off pretty easy and then put everything back together and then i do need to make a mount for this and that i think it's going to go on the side here somewhere so uh more parts to be made all right i have made a ton of progress on this mill um i got all of the oil ports installed you got two on the front here there's two on the back right there and there got a, one more down here there's another one on the other side and as you saw the saddle right here those are in everything's machined and ready to go i have my oiler is mounted my manifold is mounted i made custom little aluminum brackets for that that's installed and what showed up in the meantime is my ball lead screw kit 
I get these brackets here. I get that. I got my motor mounted there. It's all installed. The Z axis is up there, ready to go. These brackets or the pieces of steel up there right now, those will be my counterbalance. Mount some pulleys in here and run a cable down and a some sort of air cylinder or something on the back there. But that's to be finished. But this thing's almost done as far as the mill is concerned. The head is back together too. Got all that in. I do need to put oil in it, so I gotta remember to do that. Here is the that is the stop. And again, that is the seal on the front, so that needs to go in there. By the way, when the motor is mounted to the head, everything weighs about 200 pounds. So it is quite heavy. So that is the reason I'm doing a counterweight, just to uh, alleviate the motor, trying to heft that thing up and down. Um, the motors did show up here. Here are the part numbers I'm using. I'm using clear path motors because only the best. Uh, but I'm using the uh, 3421s. I should have two of those here. And then the 3432 for the big boy Z axis. So this is going to be the Z axis motor right here. And then I got two of these for the X and Y right there. Uh, so this thing should scream. So this thing is mechanically just about done. And a couple more things. Put it on the head. And then probably the next video I should get cracking on the control box. Because uh, not only did the motor show up, but all the goodies, all the power supplies and cables and switches and buttons and all that kind of stuff showed up too. So I got to put that together. But this video is getting a little long, so I will call it. And we'll have to wait for video number four, which should be electronics. But anyway, like always, I appreciate you guys watching. And hopefully this video was helpful to somebody that's doing a CNC conversion or just straight up just entertaining. Just somebody wanting to watch it. So I appreciate you watching and I will catch you guys next time. See you later.